Oh, this example is going to calculate the binding energy, the total binding energy for a nucleus, and the binding energy per nucleon. And we're going to use radon uh, 222, that particular isotope. So in doing this calculation, it's a situation of E equals mc squared, but using techniques that uh, make it convenient for these, uh, these nuclei calculations. So we'll be using the unit of the atomic mass unit. So as the... Uh, um, the topic of binding energy is applied, we want to know what energy would be required to remove all the protons and neutrons from the nucleus, to make them all separate particles. Well, to do so, we need to fill in a few more numbers here. We want to uh, separate protons and neutrons. First, we would look up in a, in a chart or a table and find that the radon has 86 protons. There are 222 nucleons, so we can find the number of neutrons by subtraction. So 222 total protons and neutrons. We've got 86 protons, so we come up with 136 neutrons. We're going to recover the uh, mass of the original nucleus from a table actually from the neutral atom from the table and get that use that table to uh, recover the mass of uh, that we'll use to deal with the protons and the neutrons um, so first the uh, original nucleus this uh, radon <coughs> mass is 222.01 Five seven four. That is the neutral atom mass in atomic mass units. It includes 86 electrons. What about the uh, the protons here? We've got 86 protons, and we'd like to also take a, take into account the 86 electrons. We cannot ignore the electrons here. Well, in, again in a table, you'll find the mass of a neutral hydrogen atom with one proton and one electron. 1.007825, if I've copied that down correctly. You ought to you know, check your own table and see what you get for that. So multiplying that out, I get 86.67295, and that's the atomic mass unit. This includes the protons and the electrons. This is a mass of a neutral hydrogen atom, one proton, one electron. Then we have 136 neutrons. Again, if you go to a chart and look the mass of the neutron up in atomic mass units, 1.008665, slightly more than the proton. And multiplying, 137.17844. You got to check that uh, yourself. So if you add up this mass of the separate particles, you find 223. 0 0.85139 0 0.85139 atomic mass units. Notice that we have more mass here than in our original uh, neutral atom. It does require energy, and that energy exhibits itself in mass for the separate particles. So to find out the binding energy, I'm going to calculate this mass difference. So we subtract off the mass of the neutral atom. And we find that the uh, mass difference is 1.833816 atomic mass units. We convert that into MEVs with our conversion factor, 931.5. MEVs for one atomic mass unit. This is essentially doing the E equals MC squared calculation in a, a simpler step. Um, so we cancel off the atomic mass units and now we'll have MEVs and we find that we have 1708.2 MEVs. That is the total binding energy We separate all the protons and, and neutrons out to separate particles. We find what mass they, they would have. We subtract the mass of the original atom. 
and we come up with a, a pretty substantial number of MEVs. But that's what would be required. And we won't do the details of how you would accomplish this, delivering this energy to the nucleus and separate all the particles out. This is a uh, more of an exercise in talking about the binding energy, how, how tightly the protons and electrons are held to the nucleus. Our second calculation, calculate the binding energy per nucleon. Per nucleon. And what's a nucleon? Proton or neutron. How many of those do we have for radon 222? We have 222. So the binding energy per nucleon tells you what to do here. Per nucleon, I take the total binding energy and I divide by 222, the number of nucleons. I don't divide by the proton count. I don't divide by the neutron count. I divide by the total count of protons and neutrons. That's what we were breaking apart, everything, to get to this number. And what I come up with, you know, to check this, 7.69 MeVs per nucleon. And there's a very interesting graph of uh, this calculation across the periodic table, a very important graph in, in helping to understand how nuclear energy is released from fission and from fusion. So make your own practice calculations, ask your instructor questions.